One last thing before we move forward into the semester. I think it's important to note that some students, overwhelmed I'm sure by the quality of their genetics course, come to the conclusion that genes control every aspect of their lives, their health, their development. They don't. Biology is not destiny. And the relationship between genes and traits is complicated. <laughs> right, so first, one gene can affect more than one trait. So for example, children born with a disease called Usher's syndrome are born deaf, profoundly deaf, and over the course of their first 10 years or so, they lose their vision. And that's because the genes that are mutated in children born with ushers affect both the development of the inner ear structures as well as the development of the retina at the back of their eyes. And so, note I said genes with an S. That's because many traits are affected by more than one gene. There's a handful of genes, five or six, that have been shown to cause Usher's syndrome in children. But let's take a more, um, a more common example like height. A recent study found over 300 genes that have some impact on how tall a person ends up. And Unlike ushers, there's not a clear, like, mechanistic reason for each of them. It's not like if you gave me the sequence of all of those genes, I could tell you how tall a person was likely to be. And of course, height is affected by those 300 genes, but it's not just impacted by genetics. It's also, for example, impacted by nutrition. That one of the reasons that humans, on average, have gotten taller over the course of the last century is because high-quality nutrition is more readily available. And recognizing that a trait, like, say, a disease like diabetes or cancer susceptibility, has some genetic involvement can give us clues, can be kind of an entree into the metabolic and the mechanistic basis of those diseases. And those molecular details can lead to better treatment.